Hey everyone, and welcome to another MatchCast of the Cure series, brought to you by David White Mage Nunez. I believe this is week two of this season's event. On the right side here, we have Kyle McGinty, and on the left side here, we have my good buddy Stephen Riley, Barry Yummy, showing off his uh, awesome Vincent playmat. Kyle going with just a traditional Final Fantasy trading card game playmat. Can't go wrong with that one. You know, I was at a local qualifier, and they were giving some of these out as one of the top prizes, but it actually had the six elemental crystals. Might have been eight, but I think it was just the six core ones uh, on close to the side where like the deck and the break zone was. It was really cool. I was so upset I didn't get that high, but whatever. All right, we're going to jump right into it. And Barry Yummy, he starts off by discarding a rain and putting down a Kuchaspel. So I'm going to guess he's playing mono fire. Uh, I guess technically you could play rain outside of fire, but I don't think you would do that. So. Mono fire looking on the left side. I have no idea what Kyle is playing, but I am sure we will get some kind of clue after he plays his first card down. I didn't see if either player mulliganed or anything, so that part I don't know. Pitching a Shantoto for all the suspense. Oh no, a Shantoto and a Bahamut. So looking at Fire Earth and a Jake. So Fire Earth Lightning put down Tyro. One of the one of the few five CP backups. You're all right putting down turn one because it just lets you go fetch whatever you want to fetch. Interesting. So I wonder if this is strictly tricolor or if this is going to be some really interesting like multi-element shenanigans kind of deck. The Jake makes me wonder because he gets, I believe, his effect increases for every different element he's played with. Okay, so there's another Lightning Behemoth King. I imagine we're going to be using that for CP unless he's got some kind of trick to put out early. By the way, he'll pass back to Steven at that point. Of course, cut the deck his way opponent. His opponent likes it. I'm very curious to see now. I wonder if we're going to go beyond these three colors that I've seen so far from Kyle's deck. All right. Steven will discard a Suka now. Oh, okay. So it's not Mono Fire. And there's Edge. We're, we're talking ninjas, baby. Woo! And we have a follow-up for that. If we, Oh, that's unfortunate. He passed. I say if we had a cheap 2 CP backup in hand, we could play it for one due to Edge's ability. Very interesting. So interesting Rain is in there. I'll have to ask him about that later. I mean, again, like that card does still work. I can never remember which one is the fire and which one is... Like, which one's the cost reduction and which one is the damage. I think the cost reduction is fire backups, but I think the damage is what is based off of just the number of backups. So even though he won't get 100% cheaper, there's still obviously fire backups in here. Looks like we threw out another Star Sybil and Behemoth King. Tap Tyro. Hit the Star Sybil. Do we grab a Shantoto here? It's ninjas, so we know our opponent has the potential to flood the board. Nope, we're going to grab the backup Moogle. Okay, so this right here... The Shantoto into the Moogle. This reminds me of your typical Wind Earth 11 package. But obviously we've got Lightning in here as well. So I'm very curious to see if there's like a trick to this deck. Or if it's just like, nah, it's just a bunch of good cards in these three elements. There's a lock too. Okay, so there's Ice. So there's four elements at least. We'll put down our Moogle. So is it a variation on Storm? I'm very curious about this deck now. I wonder if Steven's thinking the same thing, like, oh, I have no idea what to think of this. All right, so first thing we'll do, go in for a point of damage with Edge. No EX burst, but a beautiful Buenavelze. Hit into our first point of damage. Looks like the full art version, from what I can tell. A little bit of a glare. And we will pitch a nail for Mana. This will let us go fetch whatever ninja we wish. Who do you grab here? Once you've got Edge, who do you want next? So you can get Sukanawa, as we saw. He's just a free body. He'll reactivate everything can be nice after you've swung in with a forward could get gecko you can't i don't believe you can get backup ninjas you have to get forward ninjas so you could get gecko to kind of present a blow up threat although right now he'd only be at six thousand damage maybe just one of the baby forward ninjas you could get a second copy of edge also isn't a bad thing just just in case your opponent gets rid of this first one so he will opt for gecko shuffle up and we'll pass back to mcginty i'd imagine at that point all right, and Kyle will use the Moogle special to retrieve lightning. Interesting. Okay, so maybe this is a Buenavelze deck. I, I haven't actually seen one of these, but I've heard of them because this lightning backup can give haste to any 13 forward, and Buenavelze is a 13 forward, so I've, I've heard that to be very potent. Nice little combo there, and then being able to perfectly put it down off the Tyro and the Star Sybil. So Kyle's just taking his time ramping up, as I'd expect a deck playing those cards to do. 
And the Buena Velsa really comes online at three damage and higher, so. And let's see, we tapped one, played our backup Fire Ninja. He's always a sneaky threat because he can make it so our, one of our opponent's forwards can't block. Give Edge his second counter, I believe. Oh, and Ophelia. We've hit two cards into damage that both have 10,000 power. That's kind of funny. So Edge is just taking out these big guys. And then we'll put down our third ninja. Edge has three counters on him. So we also have ramped up to four backups. And Steven not committing any more ninjas than he has to. He knows there's a possibility of a Shantoto. He hasn't seen a single forward from Kyle yet. So he's probably just waiting. Like He's like, I'm not going to commit to a big board. There's just no reason to. I'll just take the time ramp up these ninjas and because he's got those edge shuriken counters kyle really wants to take out the edge before he plays any forward if he's able to because unless it's something like any stola or you know i don't know something that would you know isn't going to die to those counters he doesn't want to have to do that but luckily we do have kuchaspel down on our back line too so even if we were to put down that philia or any stola or something we will have the chance to wipe it out Golbez, hey my favorite legend from opus 13 there's got to be so many targets in this deck. Is there a Chaos or a Cosmos, a Color Fixer? Did he grab something? He's got to still be looking, right? Did he grab something and I didn't see? Did he grab another copy of the Moogle? Also, wouldn't be terrible. Let's you search out any card you want, although Golbez will let you search out any two cost. Interesting. So either he's still looking, but his deck's back on the mat. I didn't see him pull something. Oh, okay, that's why. So Steven must have said, hey, I'm going to consider using Amaterasu on this. Okay, and, and at first I was like, wait a minute, that's not going to kill it, but he can just throw an edge counter at it. Okay, so never mind, that's why he stopped searching, because Steven was like, nah, I can't let you do that probably a good play always feels bad to have to pitch three cards from hand for that but he also knows i don't want to let this guy ramp into whatever he's getting it can't be good news for me so i'm just going to go in for a third point of damage and we are going to take that is it another ten thousand? it's golbez okay nice <laughs> so he's getting the golbez search one way or another that's got to feel a little deflating for steven and pretty good for kyle's like hey man i'm getting that two cost card <laughs> regardless of what you do Unless some part of him is also sad that, oh, I really wanted to play that Golbez, so. What will he get out? The Moogle lets him get whatever he wants, and he can play it this turn before our opponent's turn ends. We'll go with the Zondie. Zondie B will be a very easy way to deal with this edge and make sure he can't get off any more of those counters, which will be nice. So Riley's got to be thinking, all right, well, Edge is going to die next turn. And you now he's just going to pass. Just leave his backups up. And he's like, why well, commit more forwards? I could just be walking right into some. So back to Kyle. All right. And Kyle put down Zondi. We took a point of damage. It is Althea. So our Althea backup. Went ahead and took out that edge for 7k. Now here comes our Golbez. Looks like we played it for free off the of Star Sybil. So we're getting another Golbez search. And this time we'll maybe either go for the Moogle or, again, maybe there's another key piece we're looking for. So if we're going for that Bonavelze, we've got four different colors right now so he is almost free he's only at two costs right now which is pretty sweet and then i can't i think he searched out another copy of the moogle it's kind of hard to tell because of the glare but it looked from what i could see i think it was another copy of the moogle 11. interesting so yeah no i'm trusting but we are just going to cast alexander to just break it Key oh no we broke tyro okay interesting I thought we were going to break the Golbez. So he doesn't care about the body, which pretty smart play. Ninjas has a lot of forms of removal, so he's probably not too worried about any of the bodies on the field. But the Tyro now says, are we casting Kusith? No, we just played another Tyro. <laughs> he's like, all right, well, if you insist, I'll just play this next one from my hand. And there's the Bonavelze, and we're already on four damage. So Bonavelze powers are getting, getting ramped up. Interesting line of play. So, I mean, you made him pay for another one, but it also let him get the forward he wanted, and uh, it's hard to say who, who really was happy to do that. At the same time, Riley just tapped his backups for that, so it's not like he overpaid from hand. He was gonna He's going to lose that CP anyway, so I don't know. Maybe that was a very neutral... That's one of those plays. It'd be interesting to see how different players evaluate, like, who came out ahead there. Did anyone? Did they both basically get what they wanted? Because if he didn't have Tyro, he also then wouldn't have had to 
throw away the cryo and the kusit to play another one. So, hooded man, going to get back our copy of Edge. Oh, well, maybe not. No, so we got Edge and Sukunawa. His targets in there. I didn't think we threw away the gecko. Get the Edge. Nice. Very appropriate standoff here. The hooded man taking on Golbez for any four fans out there. You should appreciate this this matchup. I appreciate the the pace of play. These players are just you know both going back and forth. Looks like Stevens kept eight in hand, which is really nice. Are we gonna do the Moogle special again? Yep. So there was that Moogle he grabbed earlier. Retrieve. Really nice. We can just get whatever card we want out of the deck. Do we want a fifth backup, or is now the time? Cosmos. Okay. So this is really nice. We can tap the Zondi and the Tyro. Put down Cosmos. Bonavelze will now be completely free. And then we can just put him down for free. Lightning can give him haste. And unless he wants to sacrifice his hooded man, we are we are hitting our opponent for three points of damage. Cool. Wow, I've never gotten to see this go off before. That's so neat. What a cool combo. Yep, Bonavelze gets haste. Combat. Here he comes. Brave once. Back up ninja and brave again. Another ninja. Oh, there's a blaze. Might be relevant if we hit a second one. So, yeah, we'll hit each one for five. If we can hit a second blaze here, oh, man, that would feel awful for Kyle. But what are the odds? What are the odds that we have? No, he's got... Okay, yeah, that's true. He can trade with it now. So we'll just go ahead and block the Golbez. Trade those two out. Blaze does allow that to happen. But this Bonavelze is going to be coming in for two every turn. And God help Steven if he gets... Kyle the six damage, then he's just going to start breaking his board. But again, it is ninjas. Deck has a lot of removal, so surely he's got something to be able to deal with this. Steven will pitch a Maria for an edge. Haven't seen that card in a while. And then we will put down the special ninja backup. So edge will get a counter, and if he attacks this turn, he'll deal 5,000 damage to a target. So if we have a way to give him haste... We could potentially take out that. Oh, nice. And there's the Gecko. So I, I think our backup is entirely ninjas, other than the Kuchias pool. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That should be six ninjas. That's 12,000 damage. Doesn't matter. You're 10,000 Bunavelze. You're going down, sir. Boom. Takes out big bad Bunavelze. So I think that's two of them gone. Presumably there's a third one in this deck. We also have methods of recursion. And I doubt Riley's running anything of break zone removal, so... Good chance we'll be able to get it back with a Kusith or something of that nature. Tapped, is this Shantoto? No, it can't be because our board's full. Eight, Philia. Nice. Yep. Let's we'll go ahead and wipe the board. Deal ourselves a point of damage. I'll be honest, I have no clue what that was. Uh, I kind of see a dragon shape, so it might be a mist dragon. Yeah, it's really unfortunate glare on that right side. I, I think it was a mist dragon because I can kind of see the like snake-like dragon shape of it. Okay, so we do have Kuchaspel, so Philia isn't just completely immune to all our ninja, sh ninja shenanigans, which is nice. And also we've seen we have things like Alexander, so we can just break it outright. Terra, speaking of which, might go get us back that very Alexander. Yep, absolutely. So it's like, I can't imagine this Philia being long for this world. Are we going to just get rid of it right now? Mana. Yep. Another copy of Mana. Ninjas are, are doing their thing, man. Steven's been able to just have removal for everything that Kyle has had here. He's definitely going to need to use that lightning haste because not m much he has is lasting for long. Asura's going to get us back at two costs. So we can either get the Moogle and go search out whatever we want, see what kind of answers we have. Or what else do we have that would be good here? Our backup line's full. Could get Kusith. Get a Kusith and then recur the Bonavelze. Try to put up that big body again. Have it start swinging in for damage. I, I'm, did he pick something? I'm not sure what he picked. I didn't quite see it. Probably picked the Moogle. I think he just ended up picking up the... Because I didn't see him pick up anything else from the zone. So I'm, I'm assuming he grabbed the Moogle he set aside. And there's that Jake. <laughs> Good old Jake from State Farm, as people like to joke. So that will be 9,000 damage to Terra. Easily take her out. Gives ourselves a little presence. And looks like we are passing back to our opponent. We've got the Moogle search we can do at the end of our opponent's turn. Haven't seen a lot of haste 
from Steven in this ninja deck. If any, I guess technically the nail has the potential for haste. So beyond that, I, I think Kyle's feeling okay about just not feeling this pressure that like, oh, he could just surprise kill me next turn. Because I haven't th seen anything other than the nail that might have haste. There's another edge. This is going to be another gecko. It is. Oh, man. Just with the doctor ordered. This is going to be another 12,000 damage. Two times six. Yeah. Jake is not lasting long, and that Tyro is not going to be enough to protect him. Unless we've got something in hand. Nope. Jake is going to take a big old nap. This, yeah, this looks just like the board we had beforehand. And, of course, we will Moogle search at the end of our opponent's turn. What do we get here? Lock. Good choice. Good choice. If we can't remove these guys, let's just freeze them. Uh, no six costs, so there will be nothing to break, but still keeping the ninjas frozen can be a pretty big deal. Although Edge will obviously get his continued value, and Sukunawa could potentially get rid of it, but hey, you know, you gotta you gotta go for the outs you've got. Alright, so Kyle will put down Kryl. I didn't quite see what he used, but I'm guessing it's Kusith. So he pitched Shantoto, put down Kryl, and I believe he tapped two for Kusith to get back the Bunavelze. Can put him down completely for free because we've got five different color backups. And now we're dulling Tyro and the Moogle for... Man, something like a Cecil here would be really nice to put ourselves to six, start breaking his forwards. Budavelze will get haste. He's coming in big. Another Wind Ninja backup. Another Blaze here. Well, I guess it wouldn't matter on the second hit. Blaze could still take out Cryo, though. So here we go. Now, we could block with the Gecko and throw the Shuriken at it with Edge, but nope. We'll go ahead and hit Terra. Terra will get us back one of our summons. We have Amaterasu and Alexander. Get the Alexander again. That card has been huge so far in this matchup. If he gets to cast this one, that'll be the third forward or the third character it's gotten to break. We broke that Tyro the first time. And there's Locke. Uh, so what are we going to hit? Obviously, we'll make our opponent discard. And then we'll just dull freeze both our forwards. Which is pretty good. So Alexander can take out the Bunavelze, but now we have a Locke and a Cryo threatening with summons. We can steal either of our opponent's summons. We can steal their Amaterasu. So we will have to be a little careful. Although Kryle did just come out. So Riley will have a pretty clean turn to answer it. Go ahead and pitch Veritas of the Dark. Interesting. Yeah, probably wouldn't have been too great here. Would have just sacked off the Kryle. So we get a dark card out of hand. All right. We'll pass back to Riley. He will need to put some forward presence down or some removal. Because otherwise he will lose this game. Uh, Sukunawa would also be great here. Just reactivate the ninjas. We could send Gecko in Brave, even if he blocks in the other two, Edge could easily finish it off. But that was a good, really good turn for Kyle. He, he's, he's, he's at least put down a not only a credible board threat for this turn, Riley really needs to answer him on this turn as well, because otherwise, the Bunavelze is going to push twice. He'll have all his backups back. He'll have his Tyro tricks. He's got every, access to every color in the world. Who knows what else is in this deck, so... Man, looks like he's getting up and walking away. I guess that's game over. No, I'm sure he's just going to the bathroom or getting water or something. Yeah, he came right back. We definitely need some bodies here for Steven. Either bodies or removal, because currently our opponent's threatening to hit us four times next turn. So we need at least two bodies, hoping they don't have any removal. And uh, I will say, Kyle's board is darker now. That glare is not there, so I wonder if that's what he got up to do something with the glare. I can see that was a Miss Dragon from earlier. That so was a fifth point of damage. So I wonder if Steven either dead drew, and so he's just really trying to think of a way out of this, or if he's got some just different choices and he's trying to just figure out what the best choice is. He's got four in hand. We know one of them is Alexander. We're going to go ahead and pass. Interesting. Very interesting. So unless an Ishtola or an Unsaganashi comes down, we can pretty much guarantee this Bonavelze is going to die, so you aren't going to get hit twice. I don't think there are any summons that would have protection that Cryo could use. I can't 100% remember what he had in there. Uh, technically, if there's a Mist Dragon, that's kind of a risk uh, Steven took too by passing to his opponent, because now if he does have a Mist Dragon or any way to protect that Bunavelze, that Alexander's not going to work. So that was, that's a risk he took. But also, if he stops the Bunavelze, I don't know if you can really afford to attack with either of the other two. 
So I guess we'll just see. This might be a moment of, do you have the answers or do you not? And yeah, there's that behemoth king in the break zone too. So if we've got a Kusith or a way to get him back out, we're in real trouble. There's Kusith. Is it going to be Behemoth King? Yes, it is. And I'm assuming it's going to get played right to the field. Okay, now we're really in trouble. Zani, Behemoth King, we're going for it. I mean, we we need two forms of removal. We have to kill Behemoth King and Bonavelze. The good news is I think he's only got two cards left in hand. So he probably isn't going to be able to do much off of that. So the question is, does Riley... Okay, so, oh, we do. Oh, because we have Diabolos and Alexander, so we can, I mean, there's three forwards Diabolos can break. Presumably, we'll break one of the big ones and reactivate our backups. Do we have anything? Chocobo, bounce it to our hand. Oh, man, is that going to be enough? He's going to cast Alexander on the stack? No, he can't. Oh, no, he only has fire cards in hand. Oh, that's so unfortunate. So what happened is presumably he said reactivate backups. And he made it fizzle so the backups don't reactivate. So because of that, he didn't have any win CP. And there's... And there's lock. Nothing. Oh, man. The Chocobo coming in. I was like, he's only got two cards in hand. Surely there's not much he's going to be able to do. That Chocobo coming in clutch. Man, oh man, that is that is unfortunate for for Steven, but great, great counter there by Kyle. Like Steven, I mean, because yeah, if, if he didn't have that Chocobo, we we're going to break Bonavelze and the Behemoth King, and then it's basically a whole new ball game. But being able to fizzle that effect to not cast the... Although, honestly, even if, even if like, let's say it didn't fizzle and he was able to get all his backups back, I still don't think it matters because both Behemoth King and Buenavelze represent two damage by themselves, which is a cool deck idea. I like this guy. I like this idea of like, whoa, all these forwards that can hit you multiple times. So he still would have been looking at four points of damage regardless. He really needed both of them to go through. I wonder if... If Riley... If Steven could do that again, I wonder if he should have just done it on his turn. And that way... So like, for example, what he could have done is Diabolos... I don't remember exactly what Kyle's hand was at that point. I can't see those, but he, D he does Diabolos, breaks the Boon of Elze, and then even if the Behemoth King comes down, you can still hit it with the Alexander, and yeah, he can choke it back to his hand, but oh, it can't attack at that point, even if it fizzles the summon. So, yeah, that was a risk letting it go to our opponent's turn. I wonder if we should have done that on our turn, if maybe that would have had a different result. But either way, good job, Kyle. We're going to go to game two, see how this plays out. All right, welcome to game two. On his first turn, Steven pitched Rain and Diabolos to get down two of those ninjas. We've now just doled them both to get out our Kuchaspel. And then on his first turn, Kyle discarded the lock to get down our backup Moogle. So Steven's got to be feeling pretty good. He's on three backups right away. And now we'll see how Kyle can curve out. He's definitely on a much cheaper start than he was last time. Last time he had to start out straight with the Tyro, and I think he may have even followed that up with Star Sybil. There's Althea. We didn't get to see that card last time, so... And uh, <laughs> I'm sure Steven was very f happy about that because Althea can just mess with all kinds of things we want to do in combat. So Kyle's definitely happy to have that card down. Leaves the Moogle up. Possible he had nothing else to play. Also possible he's got a copy of that Moogle and he's just going to retrieve, retrieve on our opponent's turn. Put down Terra, get back our Diabolos. Presumably passed our opponent. Didn't have the retrieve in hand. That's all right. Still got to curve out to win. This is such a neat deck. So like I said, I'd never gotten to see one of these Bonavelze decks before. But especially with that lightning backup to give it haste. That's got some real potential. Pitch and Althea and uh, Kusith, Tyro. No, Star Sibyl. Okay. So now we can either go grab another copy of the Moogle to then search out whatever we want. Or we can just grab Shantoto if we want it. What other 11? I don't... I think I saw any other 11 characters in here. Yeah, just going for the Moogle. It's kind of funny that you're searching for a card to search for a card, but obviously Star Sybil's limited to the 11 and then the Moogle can just get whatever it wants. Nice little combo. Do you get Cosmos here? Yeah, get our color fixing. So we do have two win backups down, so our Bunavelza won't be free yet, but one of them is Althea, so we can easily bounce it and anything else to our hand at any time. Did we pay for that? 
Are we paying for it with... Okay, I was like, wait a minute. There we go. So, pay for it with Bahamut. We're on four. Opponent's on four. All right, let's see what we can do here. Terrell going for our first point of damage. It is Gabranth. So we'll search out whatever we want. Probably grab one of Elze, unless we want to continue ramping up, and then we could get Golbez instead. Because we could do Golbez, get another Moogle, and search out again on their turn. Excuse me. Or Philia. Philia just having that threat of, hey, if you go wide, I'm just going to drop Philia on you again. Little two backups. Looks like we got Edge in hand. Yep. There comes Edge. And do we have anything to play off of that? Kuchaspel. Another ninja backup would be awesome. But if not, also no big deal. Nope. We will pass to our opponent. Uh, and a deck that can run Amaterasu, you never feel too bad about leaving up a fire backup. And that way you've always got it just in case. And we've got Terra on the field too, so even if we put down a Buenavelze or a Lock or Golbez, anything with 9k, Terra will finish it off, so. Discarding, okay, Lightning for Light. I was like, wait a minute, there's no way he's throwing out that backup. That's his, that's his game plan. He had another copy of it. All right, so Ranjit came down. We went ahead and got rid of Edge, and then Star Sybil played Golbez for free. And we searched out a Zondi. Zondi will be happy to get rid of another Edge if it comes down, and we'll be able to get another multicolored backup. I'm guessing he didn't have Amaterasu. I feel like if he had it, he surely would have cast it on Golbez. So I'm just going to assume he didn't have it in hand. We have gone to combat. Kara, ha uh, Kara. Terra has attacked in. Looks like we're declaring a block with Golbez. Terra, definitely a small forward, so. And I know Steven's not the suicidal type, so surely he has a follow up to this. We're gonna tap to. Maybe not. Uh, possibly an edge into a lightning ninja? Is something we could see. Well, we're tapping to fire. Are we maybe gonna do a gecko? Which would be 6,000, which would be enough to finish off the Golbez. Pitching three, are we doing our own Philia? Interesting, so we pitched another Philia, looks like maybe a Hooded Man and a Fina, and we're just gonna go wipe our opponent's board, deal ourselves first point of damage. Okay, so yeah, the terror was just to see if he could sneak in the damage, so Kyle definitely did the right thing by blocking, because we we're gonna lose Terra anyway. He had a pretty good size hand, though. Looks like he must have been on seven cards, because he dumped four, right, to get the Philia out. Yeah, three and then one plus a Philia itself. And let's see. So the biggest thing I think of that can deal with this Philly is lock. Lock can outright break it if it comes down. Which would be terrible timing for Steven and great timing for Kyle right now. Steven definitely would like to keep this Philly around at least for a few turns. And a Shantoto, you could I don't know if you want a Shantoto just a Philia. Maybe that's worth it. I mean your opponent paid eight for it. So perhaps it is, but all right, and for Kyle's turn, he just tapped the Cosmos and the Lightning, put down Zondi, opted not to use the effect, because what's the point? Philia would just ignore it anyway. There's an Asura into damage. Is that a burst? I can't remember if Asura is a burst or not. I don't think so. It almost kind of looks like it is in the corner, but I think that's just because the the way that the Lightning on the card. And then Steven will tap two and get down another Wind Ninja backup. These, <laughs> this Wind Ninja backup really likes going into damage. We saw two of them into damage last game, but... We've got some down this time, so that's kind of nice. And we'll pass back to our opponent. And he's happy to just try to get to five backups here and say, well, go ahead and do something about this Philia, because <laughs> I'll just keep punching in with it. All right, we played a Citra to get back Asura. Instantly cast the Asura to reactivate all of our backups. We've got a full five now, so surely we are planning to follow this up with something else. Do we have Bonavelze in hand? He will cost us two but that's not a huge deal. So that was one, two, that was our second cast. So four, so here comes lock. We're gonna break the Philia. We're gonna dull freeze, probably two of those backups. I think you dull freeze the two wind ones here because you wanna keep the edge off the field. If you yeah, keep the edge off, right? Yeah, really good time for lock to come out. And this time we've got Althea. So we can be ready to sit here and bounce lock to oblivion if need be.
So th th this part is definitely feeling more like a storm type of matchup. No sight of Buena Velza yet. Haven't probably haven't really felt a need to get him out there either. Oh man, and that is rough for Steven. He just discarded Veritas for hand size limit and then just passed. He didn't play a single card that turn. So free, easy two points of damage for Kyle. Strike in with the Citra and the lock. Interesting he opted not to play Veritas. I mean, I know he'll probably just get rid of the Citra, but still, at least that way you're going to get another card out of your opponent as well, especially when his backup line wants to be on so many different colored backups. I don't know. I don't know what else is in his hand, so maybe there's just things that were too precious that he didn't want to get rid of, but I feel like as opposed to just getting rid of the card, especially with two bodies staring you down, at least, you know, get kind of a one-for-one. One. And we will go ahead and put out another Citra, get back another Summon. I'm going to guess this is Asura. Again, if we want to keep... Well, I mean... No, get Kusith. I'll say we could, but Locke's already on the field. But if we wanted to like bounce the lock with the Althea, we could have done that. We're going to go ahead and cast Kusith right away. Have we discarded a Bonavelze? We had the gold best from earlier. We're just going to get another Moogle. And then wait, and on our opponent's turn, we'll just search out whatever we want. All right, we discarded a Nail to play Blaze. Hit both those forwards for 5,000. Here comes Rain. Very nice. We're on damage tree, so Rain has haste. So Rain is definitely going to be baiting out the Althea. So unless he uses Althea, both these forwards are dying because Rain's going to hit one of them for 5,000 when he enters. And then when he attacks, he's just going to hit another one for 5,000. So one of, I mean, one of them's dead, period, unless he's got a trick in hand. So he's probably considering whether he wants to use the Althea right now. And it's interesting if he targeted the... I wonder if he chose the Lock or the Citra. But obviously that's what he's going for, yeah, because unless he has something to, like, kill Rain right now, Rain's going to attack. He's going to take one of them out. Rain showing up just when we needed him here in the ninjas. And, yep, so he targeted the Citra. He'll attack with Rain, and this is where we'll bounce back with Althea. No? Are we casting something? We're going to cast Chocobo. Bahamut. Interesting. So we're saying, eh, I'm not going to bounce it back. I'm just going to kill your Rain. Bahamut will deal us a point of damage. It is another Mist Dragon. Happy to see that in a damage. Now, if Riley has anything... He gave himself an opportunity here. So the lock took 5,000. So if he's got anything that he can just hit it for one more, we can finish it off. And that Althea's down. But, oh, man, he's out of tricks. He was... Uh, now, the good news is the rain play didn't really cost him much. He got the blaze back. You know, he's back to five anyway. Rain then just cost... What, one CP? Maybe two? There's Bunavelze, and we're on damage three. Here comes the haste. Oh, man, we could put our opponent to six this turn. That is... Eh, it's harsh. There's Blaze, so Blaze is going to hit both of them. If we've got a third Blaze in there, man, oh, man, do we want to see it right now and kill both of these forwards. That would feel amazing. Here comes one of Elze again. It's a mana. Okay, so not a blaze, but we will get... Let's grab anything we want. Probably an edge to hopefully set up a bunch of cheaper shenanigans on our next turn. Yeah, he's looking. He's like, what do I want to get here? Sukunawa's not bad. I, If you're Kyle, I don't know if you swing in here with the lot. Just on the offhand chance you hit a third blaze. I mean, I'm sure it's a pretty low probability... But still, like, I mean, why? I don't know. I don't think you even need to put him to six. You've got Bonavelze. You've got the Behemoth King. You've got stuff that can attack twice. Is it worth it to take the chance? He's looking right now. He's like, do you have a Blaze in there? Yeah, there is no Blaze. So if there's a third Blaze, no? He's like, eh, forget that. What are the odds you're going to do it? As Han Solo would say, never tell me the odds. Oh, and we hit Edge. That is unfortunate if we don't have one in hand. So, yeah, he was like, nah, the odds are you're not going to hit it. Put you to six. Now you have to block. Just with this board alone, you've got to block three attacks next turn. So good luck doing that. Yeah, I knew that Althea would be trouble this game once we got it down. Kyle's definitely 
Definitely happy to see that this turn. That backup is just so annoying. Because basically, you now basically need two forms of removal to deal with anything. Because you have to use one to bait it out. And then when they use it, then you have to, on the stack, use this second one. So quite the, uh, quite the obnoxious card to deal with. All right. So Edge comes down off of two. We play our little baby ninja for one. Edge gets a counter. Would love to see a Sukunawa here. And then just reactivate everything, and then basically, yep, yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. Here comes Sukunawa. Get a second counter, going to reactivate everything we possibly have. Because Lord knows we've got enough ninjas to do it all. It's a shame none of these guys have Haste Man, because the Zengetsu here would be just what the doctor ordered. And we're going to let it do it, yeah. So, basically, I wonder if he's trying to bait out this Althea, and Kyle will have to decide when he casts the Althea, because again, the only way to really counter is you have to stack on top of it to then kill the target that the Althea is targeting, but he can't spend too much removal beforehand. Yeah, it's just, it make, it's such a pain, such a pain. And it looks like we might be done there, so use the Moogle. We'll search out whatever we want. Okay, so this is feeling very similar to the last game. We've got a full backup line, so chances are we have a summon or something in hand We've only got two counters on edge, so that's not going to be enough. Well, yeah, see that Ranjit's just gonna, that Ranjit, that's gonna be an issue. Cause here's here's the optimal line of play is that if he swings in with the Bunavelze, we hit him with both counters on edge and then this ninja blocks, so this ninja has first strike. So the ninja can safely block it without anything happening. However, what's most likely going to happen is Ranjit's going to come down right now. Basically say, hey, kill Edge immediately. So we'll be forced to spend the counters immediately. And then if he wanted to, he can legit bounce Bunavelze and then just play it right back again for free. Or, you know, for two. So we'll have to see how Kyle plays this out. but Because he does, he needs to be careful. He sequences his backups here. Here comes the Ranjit. Gonna attempt to take the edge out. I uh, and Amaterasu would feel very good here. We would just get rid of the Ranjit, completely prevent that damage. And if we got it, or so we have to do something here. So he's gonna throw both edge counters, and he looks like he's taken. They both go into lock. One to lock, one to Bunavelze. Okay. So they both took three. I love seeing these dice on the cards. So Blaze can take out one. Which, again, as long as you go to combat and then force the Althea out, at least you're preventing the Bunavelze from attacking twice. So that is huge. I can't... I don't know how many Kyle has in hand, so... I'm not sure what all he has to work with here. But, again, we've got so many shenanigans. We, like, you could Althea right now bring them back. Okay, so it looks like we used our ninja backup. We dulled it, and we pitched a mana, and I, I'm assuming we're attempting to break the Althea. And then in response, he used Althea on, I think it was Bunavelze. And now, on top of that, we are casting Diabolos... And it looks like we killed Ranjit, and we reactivated our backups. Interesting. That is not who I would have expected us to pick. So they both should still have 3,000 damage on them, right? From Edge's counters. So how do we still... Now, the good news is, so we can trade out these forwards. Well, Tsukunawa can trade out. The little... I can't remember if the little... I think he has an effect that, like, if he's blocked or if he blocks... If it's the one I'm thinking of, and if he blocks, he deals 2,000 damage. He'll deal 6 to a 4. So he could kill the lock. And we do still have access to Blaze. Blaze could finish something off for us here. So I wonder if Steven's deciding whether he wants to add to this, or if <laughs> Kyle's determining whether he should even attack or not. Oh, we're using the ninja backup again. Interesting. I wonder what we're going to break here. So that must have been... So he's pitching the Hooded Man. 
whatever he's breaking, Kyle is casting Kusith on top of it. So I would imagine to go after Cosmos? Because I don't think you care about the lightning. Ha unless you're sure Bonavelza is going to die this turn. Which I guess you could ensure it with Blaze. You probably don't care about the haste too much at this point. I guess the Cosmos is your color fixer. So that in theory, if you break both of these, it's going to be that much harder to get them down. So you're probably breaking the Cosmos. And we cast Kusith. Who do we go for? Do we try to get Ranjit again? We did. We went back for the Ranjit. So we will break Cosmos. So we are down to... Oh, both, uh, both opponents have three backups now. Costs Steven a lot from his hand. And then now, question is, does Kyle push the issue? Looks like he's... Was that all on Steven's turn? Or did he draw and just pass and I didn't see it? Because I thought we played Ranjit and then that killed the edge and we threw two things at our opponent. Maybe that's why he cleared off the dice. Maybe he was actually passing the turn and I just missed that part. It's kind of hard with these webcam games because I can't hear what they're saying. And it's not like Octagon where there's a little tracker that tells you you know, it gives you a big bling when they've passed the turn to each other. So I'm guessing that's what happened. So he, I guess, yeah, after he threw the edge shirk encounters at the lock and the Bonavelze, I guess Kyle just didn't even want to push at that point. So I guess he just passed and then everything Steven did was on his turn, which is interesting. I, I wasn't aware. Of that. I thought this was all, I legit thought this was all still on Kyle's first turn. Like, either in his battle phase or getting ready to go to battle phase or something, but perhaps two whole turns have passed and we didn't even realize it. Here comes Jake. He was only paid with two different CP, but it will be enough to take out this little baby ninja, so we are okay with that. Countered the Jake with Amaterasu, but that looks like the last card in our hand and we have no backups left. So this has got to be game. I just don't, because if the Moon like couldn't attack twice and there's, he's pitching. Oh, he tapped the Zondies, Moon like, oh yeah, ran it just to make sure. I don't think that was even necessary. He had nothing left in hand. He could have legit just ran his forwards into him at that point. Yeah, and there, that'll take the win. So fun game, fun to watch. It was cool to see that Bonavelze deck. I'm glad I finally got to see one of these because I had heard about them, but I hadn't seen. I wonder how, obviously you have some ways to color fix in there. It didn't seem like that was giving Kyle much trouble. I feel like I'd be bricking all day long trying to color fix in this deck, but cool. Fun matchup to see Ninjas and Bonavelze. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and congrats to both competitors, but of course to Kyle for winning the match. Talk to you next time. Bye.